PC. How you all doing? <clears throat> I'm doing every day a bit better. Probably 85% uh, back to normal. Um, just a little bit of, you know, the sound of uh, having a cold or whatever, but um, more or less, uh, you know, temperature is normal and uh, my nose is pretty well dried up and I'm coughing only very infrequently. So thanks for everyone who made those nice comments, uh, wishing me uh, a quick recovery and it has been a quick recovery and God be thanked uh, for the vaccines and booster. It's surely helped me. Um, so I'm back in the shed of serenity, which I've neglected a little bit uh, because uh, um, the cellar is very convenient, if you like, on cold nights. But um, actually, I've got this heater here, and it's actually warmer in the shed of serenity. So I thought, come on, um, this is where I should be, and I'm delighted to be back in my shed of serenity. It's uh, reminded me of all the nice cozy things that I had with all my tins and posters and now I've got uh, a number of pipes here and uh, the, the whole nine yards, you know, bourbon in the corner and the choice of tobaccos. Today I'm smoking my Ben Wade Churchill pipe, you've seen it before. Beautiful big bowl, squash tomato as they call it, and uh, in it I'm smoking some Wilkie Churchill tobacco, which has got um, a cigar leaf in it. And it's a very, very good one if you like a bit of cigar leaf. And uh, the tamper today is the Indian chief from Larry Blackett, of course, which is just an exquisite tamper. Now, I did mention in the last video that I'd made, um, we, we were in London, and um, it was great to be back there with the club, and, uh, and uh, we, we had a great time, actually. I did get COVID probably over there, but uh, as soon as I was back in Switzerland um, and I felt these symptoms coming on, I quarantined immediately and am still in quarantine. But uh, I think probably by the end of the weekend, the 10 days will be over and that will be all right. So, um, so where was I? Yes, um, this Wilkie. Uh, Churchill tobacco is, uh, I made a review of about a year, a year ago, if you go back in my videos, or maybe I'll put a link below, and um, it was one of my favourites, it's a, a touch of sweetness, but the cigar leaf comes through, it's, if you miss the, the taste of cigar, this one has got it in the bowl for you, so I can only recommend it. So in London, um, well, we did a lot of things and I made a few clips and it's a bit of a ramshackle, this and that. Uh, what we did is we explored the parks and one or two that we hadn't been to. Uh, and the parks in London are always lovely. And uh, we went to one or two areas like Belgravia um, or Pimlico where we hadn't been before, which were in walking distance of where Pall Mall is, so, um, and, uh, and then we wandered into town and around Covent Garden, and then we went to one or two interesting uh, places, which you'll see in the videos, uh, Charles Dickens Museum, which was uh, fantastic, and I did actually have time to have a smoke at James Fox on uh, St. James's Street and this time I went to look at the little museum that's downstairs um, 
which I hadn't done before. And oh, it was great fun, uh, I must say. And uh, anyway, um, here's some, some clips of what we did. So this is St. James Park here and it's a lovely Friday afternoon and the ducks are out and the people are out and the catkins are out and it's really and you see over there there's weeping willows they're coming into leaf they're usually an early leafing tree and uh, some blossoms are out in the cherry tree there so you know spring is coming along even the, the daffodils are almost uh, coming to the some of them the end of their time but uh, over here we see some fresher ones on the right there uh, just lovely so we're heading towards uh, Big Ben and uh, kind of go across the, the bridge to a lovely garden museum centre, have a spot of lunch. Very pleased to see above that Parliament House the Ukrainian flag, you see it? And that's, that's a show of solidarity, not only over my house in Switzerland, but also here in London. Well, this is actually uh, a George the Fourth lamppost, so that's the Prince Regent after George the Third, who was the uh, one who went a bit mad uh, and unfortunately lost the colonies. Um, and this is actually a gas light, you see up there. So. And they still keep this one going, you know. And this is in uh, Green Park, which is actually a huge park. It goes on all the way to Apsley House in one corner, and over there, not far from Pall Mall. So the little tiny sort of uh, lane that connects Pall Mall to this park and it's very large and everyone is just sunning themselves and taking the dog out for a walk and having a picnic on this glorious day. And the helicopter over there is marking the place of a protest, a very good protest to benefit the Ukraine and protesting about the invasion of Ukraine. So it's good that that's still going on. We were there earlier and um, I think it's great that people are still doing that. But I think it's great also that this lamppost is here. Fantastic. So if you're ever in Green Park and you want to get back to Pall Mall and you go in this little secret path which uh, connects the two, saves you a, quite a, a detour and, uh, and you're just uh, through here and on the, on, the, on the left here there's this fantastic house, I don't know who it belongs to, with the most magnificent lawn. Um, so it belongs to some prosperous government office or uh, aristocrats or uh, royalty or, uh, you know, oligarchs or something. I don't know. Really beautiful. Well, uh, start as you mean to go on indeed. And that was beautiful. There's some fantastic, exquisite cafes in Belgravia. Look at these beautiful decorations, how it's set out, and look at those beautiful cupcakes and gattos. Well, they have everything in this street uh, that rich people need, but especially um, here a pullover for your dog. So you just nip over to Mungo 
and moored and you can get one of those all the essentials for life yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, the belfry this is uh, Anton Moseman's restaurant club you have to join the club to even go in this restaurant and it's called the Belfry because it used to be a church. Can you believe it? Anton Moseman is probably the most famous Swiss chef and he uh, is appointed to the Queen, or was at least, I think. And this is most, one of the most exclusive, this is one of the most exclusive dining restaurants in London, right there. Sad to say, I'm sad to say that the car is just a Mercedes, which is like, you know, in this area, well, <laughs> the milkman drives one of them. But uh, the guys that go in here, you know, I probably pay 10,000 pounds just to every year be a member and pay for the meals on top. But it's a lovely idea to use a disused church uh, and preserve its architecture at least if it uh, really is abandoned by the church and they don't want it anymore. And uh, Moseman is uh, actually a legend in Switzerland, sure. And my wife uh, greatly admires his uh, cuisine. Well, the amazing thing is that Mozart composed his first symphony here in 1764. He was uh, a chum of, uh, I think he was an English flutist or something like that when he was a teenager. He met this guy and was fell in love with him. Uh, the guy died, the guy uh, died later in a boating accident, which was a bit mysterious. Um, uh, not that Mozart was gay, this was very friendly with him and either then, because I think he was quite young in 1764, he was only eight, that's right, and he was in this house in London, can you believe it, you would have thought he done that in, in Austria, wouldn't you? So, you know, I've mentioned the cars, many McLarens around here. And <laughs> look at this, you know, the guy just parks it to say, you know, here I am and I've made it, you know. Just uh, tried a really good beer here, Tim Taylor, 1858, 100 years exactly before I was born, theoretically, my official birth year, 1958, and you see this is a good beer because in about three minutes I've drank half of it, and it's actually very smooth, not bitter, and uh, a bit of fruitiness, just how I like it. So that was a good choice to sit down and have a beer. It's actually getting almost, almost warm, you know, for, for spring, uh, just the end of March. So one deserves a, a beer after a good long walk, I think. It's uh, combined as, as a lunch because we're dining very fine tonight, so I mustn't have much to eat. And there are uh, nice coffee shops which uh, combine it with cigars here. Tom Tom cigars and coffee, which is a lovely combination. And uh, I don't know if they do pipes or anything. Hello. Hello. Just doing a, a YouTube video. Can I take a little uh, video? Uh, YouTube for what? 
Uh, it's just my channel. I, I'm it's just for your personal outlay. Pipes um, and cigars and... Yeah, it's just very... If you come back, it's a very bad time. You know, I have a cleaner cleaning at the moment, so you won't be able... Oh, it's okay. Just maybe to, in a few minutes. Just to show people how, how beautiful it is here and how lovely you decorate these lovely chairs and yeah. then you do coffee as well which is a great plus so uh, when uh, american vi uh, viewers of my channel they always say where can i go where's a good no, place no no problem at all it's just uh, it's a bit messy at the moment no no why. no it's it's um, your humidor is uh, just lovely wow i'm a pipe smoker myself but oh, I, um, see. I like the occasional cigar as well so this is Jeroboam's, this is the wine shop in this uh, exclusive area and I just saw marvellously that they have uh, Paul Roger Champagne, it's one of my favourites and that was Churchill's favourite and here it's the top of the line is the Winston Churchill edition. <laughs> I can't afford that, I get usually this one, the regular or the reserve for Christmas great champagne and uh, I just see that through the window they have a marvellous selection Tiganello's and Onanaya's and all of the, the top Sasakaya's you know all the ones I can't afford but I always try and find one that's almost as good as them with a sort of uh, m much less known name lovely and you can get a bottle of Bollinger Special Cuvée, that's the bottom line of Bollinger, which is the one I get um, to pretend I'm James Bond, of course. Uh, 42 quid, that's not too bad a price, actually. And that's uh, my birthday champagne. This fantastic fountain here from 1795. We're actually in Pimlico here. See over the road sign there, Pimlico Road, and that was a much more sort of uh, lower middle class area with lots of flats like this and whatever. But uh, slowly it's been done up, and you see uh, fantastic cars like this. Uh, this is an old Triumph convertible. Isn't it beautiful? Sky blue. Jack just taking his daughter out for a nice drive in that. And there are always nice churches over there to find. Um, to look at. But traffic. Every time we come to London, I think the traffic has to be worse and worse. You know? As if it can get any worse. There we go. So uh, this is Lambeth House, which is. Uh, Lovely Tudor car select, we could say. And uh, the Archbishop in the days of um, Henry VIII and earlier uh, resided here. It's one of the overlooked uh, monuments of, of London a little bit. And right next to it is what we were looking for, which is the Garden Museum. So we will have a look at that. So we just came up 131 steps through that little door and uh, we have a magnificent view of London. There's the shard over there. So I told you in a, one of my earlier videos. And this is uh, parts of Lambeth Palace, which I was quite correct. There was a guide who gave us a few tips and he was indeed the Archbishop of Canterbury but he lived near the seat of power here in Tudor times uh, as the church was very powerfully as the church was very powerful uh, in politics of those times Yes, and see this lovely lawn down there and the Tudor brick chimneys which are very characteristic and his own personal church 
that he had and a lovely view of the Westminster Parliament uh, buildings and the Thames and apparently Westminster Bridge before that existed um, there used to be a ferry uh, going back and forth across that stretch and uh, a coach and horses costed coach and horses cost you one shilling and sixpence which those times when maybe ten pounds was an annual salary um, was a great deal of money and here's a piece of the history who would have thought um, here in this uh, garden museum exhibition uh, that you would find the grave of the famous Captain Bly, William Bly Esquire and he was a vice admiral and um, although he was reprimanded for this story about the bounty and the mutiny he had a pretty good career long after that and got to vice admiral died at the age of 64 and uh, this is uh, one of uh, apparently many thousands of graves that were either in the church or out here in the cemetery and uh, the Victorians apparently they cleared everything out but they just left, left the graves in place but the tombstones were gone but uh, this one and another one were retained because they were actually famous people and this was a reason that they did not demolish this beautiful building was that that was thought in the early 70s that they would do it because it was in very bad state of repair this lovely church building but um, it was actually saved by the fact uh, that William Bly was here <laughs> and this for example is the oldest restaurant in London 1798 and uh, quite a bit of information but here they say it's absolutely the oldest one frequented by great literary talents like Charles Dickens and uh, many others listed there and we made a visit to Charles Dickens house uh, which is now a museum this is a picture of him dreaming about the characters in his novels this is the beautiful uh, bureau where he wrote his novels and there was a lovely tea shop as well at the back, beautiful. This is Regency Park, which is a must-go in London. It's beautiful, full of lovely statues and fountains to look at and lovely walks between cherry trees, which were blooming at that time. Here's an old lead plant case from 1756, can you believe it? And uh, Everyone was just sunning themselves and enjoying it that uh, Sunday and lovely, beautiful flowers as well. This is uh, Eaton Place. Eaton Place was the, the place where uh, upstairs and downstairs, that series in the 70s, before, long before Downton Abbey, it was upstairs and downstairs and that house the, uh, the central politician figure in that story was uh, here and look at he was surrounded by Georgian architecture and there you see the refurbished Big Ben in its magnificent cleaned up condition and it looks like it was built yesterday apart from the design and the style of the architecture gives it away, of course, but uh, it looks just lovely now in the sunlight. So here we are in 
Fortnum and Masons, which have these lovely entrances with candelabras and little figurines with the lights and uh, beautiful paintings of long ago battles at sea. And as you see here, a fine selection, mostly uh, things to eat and uh, put in your kitchen table and that kind of thing, hampers and you know accessories. But worth a visit in, if you're in London because the food hall is quite spectacular. And this is the food hall and it's all the top quality stuff. Absolutely beautiful. That's my wife picking some quality stuff. And here you see the Fort Hill Mason's tea room. Absolutely beautiful. Finally got into James Fox's for a smoke and uh, went down to the museum which is uh, just down the stairs in the basement. All kinds of original things here from the great man Churchill. An old tabacchiana. And and the seat that Churchill sat in, which I shall now seat in myself. Just doing a selfie. <laughs> Here I am. But it's full of other things. Oscar Wilde. I guess he also bought cigarettes here, perhaps. And lots and lots of little models of Churchill himself. Great fun. He was a customer here, as you see, up to 1964. smoke upstairs in the lounge. So as you see we did a lot of things and I can thoroughly re recommend all of those activities if you visit London anytime soon. One thing I didn't mention is we went to the cabaret show at the Kit Kat Club which was the old Playhouse Theatre and um, it was the most expensive ticket I've ever bought for a show and I thought, oh, what are we doing here? But we went to the show and it was absolutely spectacularly brilliant. Um, the singers and the cast were perfection of choreography and talent, all of them. Uh, and the the lead singers, um, Ra Fay was in this one, um, and uh, as, as the male lead of the, the host of the cabaret show, so to say, and, and Amy Lennox was uh, Sally Bowles, which was played by Liza Minnelli in the, in the film, and she was absolutely beyond brilliant. Uh, she reminded me of Vivian Lee when she was doing theatre. It was a long time ago, and uh, Amy Lonics is a beautiful, blonde, petite, fantastic. But um, her performance of Don't Tell Mama, you know, that song, um, was absolutely perfection. I've never seen anything like it. And they set the whole stage out like a cabaret. Some of the tables you could actually have a meal and, and drink. We were up in the in, in the uh, grand circle there, um, and the orchestras were in two parts, left and right. It was a, the staging was absolutely innovative, and, and as soon as you went in, 
they, they took you through all kinds of passages and gave you a drink and there were performers who were dancing there and um, they really got it absolutely perfectly. I, it's a lot of money to get a ticket there, um, but if you look in advance, you can get it a, a bit lower, but I tell you, it's worth it. And I'll never forget that performance as long as I live. So uh, that, was a, that was a great time. And, um, uh, and, and the, I'd always wanted to go to the Charles Dickens uh, Museum and uh, finally I, I got there and, and there was really a lot of interesting things and they're building it out and they're adding uh, new rooms uh, in, in the house where he lived actually and wrote several of his novels. Um, so it's only going to get better and better and uh, I should have brought my mug. I got a nice Christmas mug with Bar Humbug on it with uh, Scrooge. But uh, you'll see that again in Christmas at the end of the year. I shall enjoy the lovely smoky atmosphere here and listening to the radio and uh, smoking the rest of this bowl of uh, Wilkie Churchill tobacco. You'll take care, look after yourselves. Bye bye.